In the last video, we have discussed how earthing electrical equipment helps to protect people from electric shock. We have also seen as part of this earthing protection, it is also necessary to earth the supply system to complete the path for the fault current. In this video, we will look into why do we earth the power supply in the first place. To understand the issue we want to discuss, please look at this figure. As we have discussed, earthing protects by providing a safety bypass to the fault current which otherwise would have gone through a person handling the equipment. As you can see here, suppose there is a short between the body and the face. The current will pass through this path that is from the line to the body of the equipment to the earth wire to the earth uh, return part of the earth and back to the supply. So it will pass, uh, pass through this path rather than through the person's body. Here one question may rise. We have noticed that in this case the supply is earthed at this point and earth current through the fault flows through the supply earth to complete the loop. We can also appreciate the fact that had the supply not been earthed there would not have been a complete path for the fault current to flow through the earth. The question we want to ask here is, what happens if we don't earth the return conductor at all? Would it cause shock to the person who handles the live wire? You can see that if the return conductor is not earthed, there is no return path for the current through the earth. So the person will not feel any shock, even if there is no earth wire. But still why do we earth the <coughs> power supply if it only increases the chance of a shock by providing a complete path for a fault current? The answer is, suppose one of the wires is accidentally grounded. Grounded means the live conductor touches the ground or some grounded body. And suppose the other wire is shorted to the body of an equipment, what will happen? A person handling this equipment will get a nasty shock, especially if this system doesn't have a earth wire to bypass this current to the earth. So you can see that the global conductor nature of the earth process a safety threat in this case. In the sidelines, you may also appreciate the fact that if the same conductor as the faulted one is earthed accidentally, the person handling the equipment will not feel a shock because now there is no complete path from line to neutral. To provide this bypass to the earth, it is hence necessary to earth one of the supply terminals so as to complete the path of the fault current. For this reason, it is mandatory for modern electrical supplies to be earthed except for special cases, which we shall hopefully see later. In short, we have seen that not earthing the supply system apparently reduces the risk of electric shock, but as there is no guarantee that an ungrounded system will remain uh, so, especially as earth is always around us, which will increase the risk of electric shock. One thing that might come to your mind is, even in this case, uh, the grounding uh, does the grounding the equipment will protect the against the accidental grounding? The answer is it uh, actually it does and for this reason the equipment is grounded even in ungrounded systems. But as you can imagine in this case there may not be a good ground at the fault point and so the fault current may not be very large due to high impedance or resistance in the earth current path. This may prevent the fuse from blowing and thus isolating the fault and alerting us to the presence of a fault or the presence of a ground. So it is better to establish a clean low impedance path for the earth fault current through the body of an electrical equipment in the first place itself to cater to any potential electric shock. Thanks for watching this video.